Okay, I told you that I would do a key for your EOCT online USA test prep homework from Monday. The problem is I didn't realize that it was completely giving new questions every single time and probably to every single person who did that 10 problem assignment. So, I mean, I've opened it like three different times and I've gotten different questions every single time. So I'm just going to do a sampling of the problems that I'm seeing because almost certainly, well, I know it's the same types of problems. So there will almost certainly be something very like what you did and hopefully answer some of the questions you had. Okay, the very first one here, and I'm wondering if I can be kind of weird and show you the problem like this. Oh, I can. It says, let A and B be rational numbers. Then by definition, A is equal to M over N and B is equal to P over Q, where M, N, P, and Q are integers. That's just another way of saying you can write them as fractions. That's what rational means, is it could be written as fraction. X, Y equals M over N times P over Q, which equals M, P over N, Q. So X, Y is the quotient of two integers. Then it says the proof shows that the product of two rational integers is. And by the way, this reason this has an, a wrong answer is because I went through it just trying to get through it and see if the answers were the same or the problems were the same. I chose A on every single one. So A is an integer. We already know that that's wrong. The proof shows the product of two rational numbers is rational. In other words, they showed that if I, if I multiply M over N and P over Q, which are representing rational number A and rational number B, then I get another number that is something over something. So that's showing that the product of two rational numbers is rational. Okay, next problem. Let's see. Next one I get is which is equivalent to 3 plus 2i times 5 plus i. Okay, remember if you don't have anything in between the parentheses, this means you're doing FOIL. So I'm going to do 3 times 5 and I get 15. 3 times i gives me 3i. 2i times 5 gives me 10i. And 2i times i gives me 2i squared. Now, every single time you see i squared, you should change it automatically to negative 1. So I'm going to erase this i squared and put a negative 1 in its place. So now I have like terms that are numbers. 15 plus negative 2 is 13. And like terms that are both i's. 3 i's and 10 i's adds up to 13 i's. And that's my correct answer. Um, the next one on my assignment is, let me open it up, simplify the expression. Okay, and the expression is anything but simple looking. Looks like this. Hang on, sorry for the slowness. It says 3x to the 1 half, y to the negative 1 half, x to the negative one half, y to the one half, and then it's all to the second power. Please understand that they're trying to make that look as messy as possible. That doesn't mean it's not doable. So we're going to simplify this by first we have to raise everything to the second power. Okay, so I have 3 squared, that makes 9, x to the one half squared, one half times 2 is just 1. Then y to the negative one half squared, negative one half times two is just negative one. And then that's over, and this still, the two still gets applied down here. So two times negative one half is negative one. Two times one half is one. All right, so notice that on anything that had a variable, we are multiplying in our exponents. This We multiply the ones inside and outside with each other. This is not a variable. This is not an exponent, so I don't multiply it. I do 3 to the second power. Now, anything in the with a negative exponent means this is on the wrong level. 
So that needs to move down here, and this needs to move up. That means we're going to have one, two x's, which is x squared on top, and we're going to have y times y, which is y squared on the bottom. And that is as simple as it gets. Okay, the next one on my problem says which of the numbers is irrational? No, I'm sorry, I lied. It says which of the numbers is rational? And here are your answer choices. Your answer choices are square root of 5, square root of 2, square root of 25, and pi. Okay, remember we talked about, and it's in also in the other video, if you look at the one that has like surface area and volume that has three parts, we talk, I talked extensively on that video about rational numbers and what that means. Basically, rational number means I don't want to have a square root once I've simplified it. Now, if you can take the square root, that means you can simplify it. I don't want to have pi once I've simplified it, and I don't want to have i once I've simplified it. Rational numbers don't have any of those things. Irrational numbers do have those things, but rational means none of that. Okay, again, remember rational means I can write it as a fraction where it's just number over number, and I can't do that with these. This one simplifies to 5. 5 is a rational number because that's just 5 over 1. Okay, so this is the only one here that is rational. The other three are irrational, irrational, irrational. All right, next we have number five. It's asking for the conjugate of a complex number. Remember that if you want the conjugate of a complex number, a complex number is any number that we can write in the form, complex number, can be written in the form a plus bi, like 3 minus 2i, or something like that. Its conjugate means change the sign of the i part only. Okay, so that's 3 plus 2i. Boom, that's the conjugate. Now this one, however, it gives it on a graph. Emma Eubanks, please come to the main um, office. Emma That was Eubanks, not in our, it's not in our AKS. Office. But if you wanted to see how to do that, it's not that hard. What it has on the graph is it says that the x-axis is my real axis, and this is my imaginary axis. So what that means is when I go to the left and to the right, and this one was to the negative 2 to the left, that's a real number. So negative 2 is my real number. And then this one goes up 3. So that's my imaginary number. And imaginary numbers always have what? I. So that's what that point would be. Negative 2 on the real axis and positive 3 on the imaginary axis means my imaginary part is 3i and my real part is negative 2. So if I wanted the conjugate of this one, my conjugate now would be, or complex conjugate depending on how it says it, negative 2 minus 3i. They both mean change the sign of the i part only. Next, we have what equation or what expression is equivalent to, and here's another messy one, so this is a great one. 2a squared b to the 11 fifths and then c to the fifth. Now, it helps to look at the answer choices when you have one like this, because when I look at the answer choices here, all of them, if I look down them, all of them look like this. A fifth root and then a bunch of stuff under here. So all of them have stuff, the fifth root of something. And the whole thing is underneath the radical for all the answer choices, like everything is under here. Nothing outside of it. So that means basically I have to think of all of this in terms of fifth roots. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. This one is already in that term. In other words, if it has 5 as a denominator, that's the same thing as the fifth root. This one is not, but what I have to do is I have to think of what would that number, 5, be in terms of something over 5? What can I divide 5 by to get 5? And the answer is 25. So 5 is the same as 25 divided by 5. 
So I'm going to rewrite this as 25 divided by 5. I'm trying to get 5 as a denominator on all of these. All of these to the 1 fifth power in some way or another. Now this was a 2. So I'm thinking 2 over 1 equals what divided by 5? That's 10. So this is the a to the 10 divided by 5. Is a to the 10 divided by 5 the same as a to the second? Yes. So all I'm doing is rewriting it in a way that allows me to see what it would be in terms of fifth roots. This one's the most challenging. Okay, so I have to think what two, how to rewrite two as the fifth root of something. Well, here's how to do it. I figure out what two to the fifth is. So I multiply two five times, or two to the fifth power, and I get 32. So I'm going to rewrite 2 as 32 to the 1 fifth power. In other words, the fifth root of 32, because that's what 2 is equal to. So 32 to the 1 fifth power. Now everything's over 5. So I'm going to put all of that under a radical with a 5 out front. Now I've taken care of the 5's on the bottom of all these fractions. The numbers on the top are still there. So 32 to the first power, a is going to be to the 10th power, b is going to be to the 11th power, and c is going to be to the 25th power. And that's my answer. Next we have simplify, simplify the expression. It's another one that has exponents. 3 times x to the 3 fourths power times 8 times x to the 1 half power. Okay, so I can think of this, this is all times, there's no plus in here. So this is the same thing as just saying 3 times x to the 3 fourths times not 8, excuse me, times x to the 1 half. I can rearrange that. And that's always true with multiplication. You can multiply in any order you want to. So I could do 3 times 8 times x to the 3 fourths times x to the 1 half. What do I do with my exponents when I'm multiplying powers? Like if I had x to the 3rd times x to the 4th, what would I do with the 3 and the 4? I would add them. That's the rule for exponents. So I'm going to add 3 fourths plus 1 half. Thank goodness you're using a calculator that makes it easy. So you put in 3 fourths plus 1 half. That's going to give you 5 fourths. So this gives me 24 x to the 5 fourths power. Okay, and that's the answer. That's the answer choice. At this, at this point, what I did when I paused was I looked at the answer choices, and that was one of the answer choices. If that wasn't one of the answer choices, you would have to think about whether there's another way you could write that. Next. This one's an interesting one. If k to the 1 half is an integer, and k to the 1 fourth is an integer, what is a possible value for k? The easiest thing to do on this one, honestly, instead of just figuring it out, because this is possible values. So, in other words, there's not one right answer. There are lots of possible values, and they're saying which one of these is a possible value. I would go ahead and pick the answer choices and plug them in and see. Okay? So, on this one, USA Test Prep made it easy this time. I doubt the EOCT would make it this easy. I can tell immediately which one's my answer because three out of four are negative. This means the same thing as square root of K. Okay, so if I take a square root of it and I get an integer, the, the only way you can take a square root of a negative number is if you get an i. i is not an integer. Integer means positive and negative whole numbers. Okay, I have to take the square root of a positive number then. Okay, so I can't take the square root of a negative or else I'd have an i in there and it wouldn't be an integer anymore. So that's how I know to skip down here. My answer choices were negative 625, negative 64, negative 1 and 625. So let's try, pretend that some of these other ones were, were positive. I would plug in and try. I would say, okay, let's see. 
let's say it was 64. Let's say 64. Square root of 64, an integer, true. And then fourth root of 64. If I want to check that in my calculator, the easiest way to put it in is 64 to the 1 fourth power. And that's not going to be in an integer. You're not going to be able to get an integer. The third root of 64 is 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. But there's nothing I can multiply 4 times, that's what fourth root means, and get 64. So, but here I don't even need to try 64 because it's not positive. So square root of 625 is 25. Square root, excuse me, fourth root of 625, which is 625 to the 1 fourth power, is 5. Um, two more. One of them says, what is the product? Remember, product means I'm about to multiply. What is the product of 4 minus 11i and 6 plus 2i? Again, this is FOIL. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 2i is 8i. Negative 11i times 6 is negative 66i. And negative 11i times 2i is negative, excuse me, negative 22i squared. Now remember, i squared always turns into automatically a negative 1. So I'm going to erase this and put a negative 1. So I've got 24 plus 22, that's 46. 8i minus 66i is minus 58i. And last but not least, find all complex solutions to the equation x to the fourth equals 16. Okay. Okay, so we could do the fourth root. Um, the problem is your calculator only gives you the positive number answers. So your calculator is going to give you two on this. Okay, so when you do this in your calculator, 16 to the 1 fourth, you're going to get two. Looking at the answer choices, this is what you've got. You've got negative 4 and 4, negative 2 and 2, negative 2i, positive 2i, negative 2 and 2, and negative 2i and positive 2i. Okay, so the fact that I get 2 in the calculator rules out number or answer choice A. So I know it also rules out answer choice D. So the only question now in my mind is whether 2i or negative 2i would work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 2i to the fourth power and see am I going to get 16. Okay, 2 to the fourth power is 16. What's i to the fourth? It's 1. So 16 times 1 is 16. So yes, 2i works. So this works. So my answer choice is C. And that's it for 10 problem assignment. Again, they may not have been the same 10 problems you did, but they should be pretty similar.